Good evening. We call to order the uh, Planning and Zoning Board meeting for September 24th. We will begin, as always, with the agenda. Does anyone have a uh, change or suggested edit to the agenda? If not, a motion to adopt would be in order. I'll make a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor of adopting the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. That motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have minutes from the August 27th regular meeting. We did not have a work session, so we only have one set of minutes. Same rules apply. If you have any edits or suggested changes, please let me know. Otherwise, I would be looking for a motion to approve the minutes. I move we approve the minutes. Do we have a second for that? A second. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no, please. That motion also carries unanimously. We will move into our two cases for the evening. Our first uh, case is 17 REZ 14A. Mr. Barry, the Director of Planning and Development will speak with us. Good evening. Good evening, Board. I'm excited to be here to introduce my first case as the, in the, my new role as Planning and Development Services Director. Um, fortunately for me, I believe this one will be pretty straightforward. Like all cases that come before you, the question that you are charged with answering is if this rezoning is consistent with the community plan. The plan's purpose is to articulate the town's vision and values and set a course for achieving Cary's desired future. And because Fenton is in the Eastern Cary Gateway, the plan goes into more detail to describe specifically what was envisioned. Fenton was last before you on December 18th, 2017, where it received a unanimous, where it was unanimously found to be consistent with the Imagine Cary Community Plan. It then received unanimous, unanimous approval January 25th, 2018, from the Town Council. Fenton returns before you with a minor technical amendment to its adopted rezoning ordinance. This minor amendment does not make any changes to the land use, the intensity, or the design. Rob Wilson will now provide an overview of this minor amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. As Scott has indicated, Fenton does return with a technical amendment to its adopted rezoning ordinance. The actual ordinance that the council adopted to rezone the property had a condition that was offered by the applicant which specified Columbia development by name. As often happens with development projects, Columbia may need to create a new development company with a new name. In order to address this situation, Columbia Development has requested an amendment to the rezoning ordinance to allow flexibility regarding the name of the actual development entity while providing assurance that Columbia will still remain actively involved in the project. There were not any citizens or council comments at the public hearing on August the 23rd. Staff finds the proposed rezoning ordinance amendment to be consistent with the Imagine Carry Community Plan as no changes are proposed regarding allowed uses, <coughs> intensity of uses, or any of the many conditions included in the zoning district or the approved preliminary development plan. Both the P&Z Board and the Council unanimously determined that the original rezoning was consistent with the Imagine Carry Community Plan, and since this proposed change is technical in nature, staff believes that the previously established consistency is maintained. Given the minor technical nature of the amendment, there is no applicant presentation, and staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Does anybody have any questions about this at all? Mm -hmm. No. Well, at the risk of being presumptuous, then we can go right towards a, a motion if someone would care to <coughs> one. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Go right ahead. Um, I move that the board find case number 17REZ14A is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other actual plans for the reasons set forth in the staff report presentation and discussion by the planning and zoning board may I have a second a second uh any discussion on this sir um, no this i mean this is pretty straightforward mm -hmm. a, you know a tech technical amendment i i don't believe this is um anything that uh will derail or change the the purpose of the whole original fitting case Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Anyone else have anything to add? All right. Would all those in favor of uh, 14 REZ 14 a, or 17 REZ 14 I please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. That motion carries unanimously. We are on to Thank our. <coughs> excuse me. Thank you. 
We're on to our second and uh, I believe final case, 18 REZ 13 Indian Wells Road rezoning. Hello, Ms. Ramsch. Good evening. So uh, for your consideration tonight is a rezoning request for 8.2 acres on Indian Wells Road. The site is on the <coughs> north side of Indian Wells Road, about a quarter mile west of Highway 55. And the site is about 600 feet south of Cross Point Church and the Northwest Cary YMCA. It's about 400 feet southeast of the future park that will be on Carpenter Fire Station Road. The site is currently zoned Residential 40 District. New subdivisions west and south of the site are zoned RHCU and TRCU. And it's bounded by some existing R40 zoning to the north and to the east. The applicant has proposed to rezone the site to transitional residential conditional use with three proposed zoning conditions. Uh, if this location looks a little bit familiar to you, that's because last month you heard a rezoning case for the site immediately north of the, the, the uh, R40 site that surrounds it to the north and to the east, which was the Carpenter's Point rezoning. That rezoning was also for TRCU district. So, and in terms of the zoning conditions for tonight's case, the first zoning condition concerns the allowed uses. This slide shows most of the uses permitted by right in TR district. And from among all those uses, the applicants proposed only allow detached dwellings and townhomes. In terms of maximum density and minimum lot size, the normal TR district standards would govern. And the TR district allows up to six dwellings per acre and detached lots can be as small as 5,000 square feet. The second zoning condition stipulates that the site's community gathering space will be at least 5,000 square feet, and this is over quadruple the town's LDO requirement for a site of this size, which would require 1,200 square feet. The third zoning condition specifies there will be at least 12,500 square feet of common open space. Uh, if the site were to develop with townhouses, for example, with less than 25 townhomes, this condition would provide more open space than would be required by ordinance. If it was more than that many units, the condition wouldn't offer extra benefit, but still it covers us in the case of, of uh, only having, let's say, up to 25 units. We did want to point out that uh, after we went to press and the uh, agenda went on the website, we found that in the staff report there was a mistake on page 13 where under common open space, it incorrectly mentioned a limit on the total number of units that can be townhomes. It was text that was erroneously copied from another report, and that does not apply to this case. So according to the future growth framework map, the site is part of an area designated as a mixed neighborhood. The mixed neighborhood development category encompasses and describes neighborhoods and housing located in the northwestern part of Cary's planning area <coughs> within about two to three miles of Research Triangle Park. Mixed neighborhoods are intended to have a mix of different types of housing and densities, including detached homes, patio homes, townhouses, and multifamily, in order to have a wide range of housing off, uh, options close to RTP. So this map shows all of the mixed neighborhood areas in the entire Cary Community Plan. As you can see, they're all close to RTP. The town's GIS data indicates uh, that existing development within this area currently consists of about 9,000 dwelling units on the ground. Of those, 52% are detached single family, 28% are townhomes, and about 19% are multifamily. So we do have a pretty good mix of housing types in this area. Staff has evaluated this case regarding conformance with applicable policies in the Imagine Carry Community Plan. Staff feels the proposal supports two key policies in the live chapter by potentially increasing the mix of housing in the new neighborhoods in the northwestern growing part of Cary as well as townwide. Policy three in the live chapter recommends the provision of uh, having more housing within the newly developing areas of town. <clears throat> the intent behind that is that as people, as families go through their life cycle and age and grow, uh, you can find different housing products to meet the needs of your household at different stages in life without having to leave your part of town. So we would like to see a mix of housing <coughs> fairly proximate to any given area in town. So this map is taken from the interactive development uh, 
map that's on the town's website, and you can <coughs> see uh, there is a nice mix of housing that's starting to emerge in this area. Townhomes, multifamily, uh, some single family, quite a bit of single family detached. The preponderant uh, type is single family detached, so adding some townhomes in this area might really help to improve the overall mix within this par uh, particular neighborhood. The proposal also helps us support the plan's work policies concerned with providing ample housing options near major employment centers, such as RTP, in order to help attract that workforce of tomorrow. Lastly, Shape Policy 6 deals with transitions. Uh, the town's development ordinances will ensure there will be suitable transitions around the perimeters of the site by requiring context-sensitive perimeter buffers and landscape strips. Uh, for example, if townhomes were built on this site, then next to the Indian Wells subdivision, which you see just to the left of the site on this slide, there would be a 40-foot landscape buffer. The town's GIS mapping does not indicate any stream buffers or floodplain affecting the site. The Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Master Plan identifies the proposed neighborhood park, which we mentioned, labeled Future Park on the slide, and it's only about 400 feet northwest of the site. The Panther Creek Greenway Corridor, the future corridor is shown by the dashed green line, and that corridor is only about 200 feet from the site. So this will be, uh, the site provides really wonderful access to both Greenway and Park. <coughs> Indian Wells Road is designated as a two-lane collector street, but only for the section from NC 55 Highway up to Wakina Road. So it's that light blue line you see on the, on the, uh, on the slide only about a third of the frontage is on a collector road. Uh, the rest of the frontage is simply a local street. There is a GO Triangle transit route along NC Highway 55. It's about a quarter mile east of the site. The applicant conducted uh, the required neighborhood meeting at Town Hall on June 6th, and we had about five neighbors attend at that time. Residents expressed concerns about development in the area, that is the overall amount of development they were seeing in the northwestern part of town in their neighborhood. Uh, they also talked about traffic on Wakina Road, school impacts, and they wanted to know a little bit more about the type of housing that might be near their homes in the Indian Wells subdivision. However, at the uh, town council public here on July 26, no citizens uh, came to speak. One council member did have some questions about the amount of community gathering space that might be provided on the site or the amount of open space that might be provided. And it was in response to those questions from council that the applicant added those uh, second two zoning conditions, increasing the total community gathering space and specifying a greater uh, than required amount of common open space. Uh, staff feels this rezoning request is consistent with the Cary Community Plan because the case does support several policies from both the live and work chapters, as we've noted, and because we feel it does conform with the definition for mixed neighborhood on the future growth framework map. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Uh, the, al the applicant's representative, Allison Poca, is here tonight, and she's available to uh, make some comments and then answer questions as well. Thank you. Allison? <coughs> It's easier to stand or sit as you please. Um, at this point, my client is looking at two totally different scenarios for this site, which is why you're seeing townhomes and single family residential, because they haven't quite decided which direction they want to go. But either way, the comments that they were hearing with one of the town council uh, women, what, what, yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> um, was that she was concerned that there wasn't enough open space and so they wanted to make sure that that would be met and with both scenarios that we've been investigating we could very easily give two um, conditions and so we did put the conditions in of the 5,000 uh, square feet of community gathering space and the 12,500 square feet of common open space um, depending on which scenario they choose, that might actually become much more than what you're seeing here, but that's going to be the minimum baseline. And um, they see it as kind of an, an, almost an extension of the rezoning case, the Carpenter's uh, Point that's directly north of them. In fact, we've been working with them 
and we'd like to see and have been working on road alignment so that the road would come up from Wakina and then connect to Carpenter's Point. So there would actually be some flow through, which would give them a lot more um, both vehicular and pedestrian access, gets them closer to park areas and the Greenway. I'm here if you need questions answered. Thank you. <coughs> So, any questions of the staff of the up? I'll start over here with Sherry. Um, I did have one question, and you might have covered this when I was <coughs> reading something on the other slide. Um, my concern was the traffic, um, because I, I'm very familiar with that area. Is there only one way in or out of that that area that you're looking at, Teresa? <coughs> I can help answer that. Yeah, can you? you like. Is there a map or something yes, that you it, did show? There's not um, a perfect map, but I can show you an, a recent aerial that you see what's under construction. So, mm -hmm. on this map, you'll see where the uh, Northwest Cary YMCA is. There's a road that will go from Carpenter Fire Station Road, comes down to Indian Wells Road. Mm -hmm. The new, um, if uh, the Carpenter's Point rezoning is approved, this townhome community would have an entrance on this side, on, on the west side of Cross Point Church to Carpenter Fire Station, a road would come in, all go all the way back here, plus stub to this property. So from this property, the town would require road connections to the north. There may not be enough road to require one uh, to the east, but that lets, uh, that'll let residents in here either come up at this end <coughs> of, India, of uh, Carpenter Fire Station or work their way over and come up this way as well as coming out into Indian Wells. Okay. So at the end of the day, when this area develops, the connectivity should be very good. OK, mm -hmm. good. I was just trying to Im imagine that um, going around Cross Point and, and through there, because I'm very familiar with that that um, Cross Point and the Y um, in that traffic that kind of builds up going on to NC-55. So thank you. And eventually, there will also be, you see, Highcroft Drive on the left of the slide, mm -hmm. uh, it's still working its way as different projects come in, getting built little by little. But eventually, the local streets will also connect back over to Highcroft Drive and provide another north-south avenue. OK, perfect. Thank you. Okay. We'll just keep working our way down from the right. Hi. Um, thank you. Um, good evening, Scott, and for the applicant. Um, appreciate you being here. Um, Mine was also about connectivity, but I was thinking about the greenway, and this may be something that's going to happen at site plan, but the connectivity with the applicant's property with the proposed greenway, will there be uh, accommodations or requirements for um, for pedestrian access to that greenway? Because it looks like it's, from the map, it's it's north of their property. It, How does that typically? Would... It, it can, I'll answer with... First, what the town would require, okay. and then Allison may have some comments of her own about what her clients think in terms of site design. So there will be local street connections. So at, at a minimum, uh, when a development plan comes in, the town will require through sidewalks on the local streets a way to get from the site up to the greenway. So okay. it could be via sidewalk. Uh, sometimes, depending on the site, we also look to see if a private trail connection can be provided up to the greenway, if that works better with the site plan. So there'll be a safe pedestrian route, um, and perhaps Allison, if you have any other thoughts or, or I'm gonna actually actually additionally, use this map since as soon as I find your cursor. At this point, the Carpenter's Point plan is showing a road that comes here and ends in a cul-de-sac right there. We would like to tie in so that our road comes there and ties to that cul-de-sac. They have a sidewalk connection. So I lost the cursor. Um, they have a sidewalk that connection that goes up from there to the greenway, and we would tie a sidewalk alongside of our road to their sidewalk connection, so you would have direct access to the greenway. Okay. All right. Thanks. I, I appreciate the, the answer to the previous question. Help me understand the roads in there, and then seeing the pedestrian connection at the minimum. There's going to be a sidewalk, and then maybe then some, but at least. That's all the, the connectivity is occurring in there. Um, I don't have any other questions. I do appreciate staff including the details about the landscape buffer because I know that was something that came up in the public hearing. But uh, my answers about the buffer got answered in, in the report, so I appreciate that. It all will depend upon what 
what sort of building in the lot sizes and that'll get worked out at the site plan stage then. Okay. Thank you. Any more? No, I'm done. Okay. Steve? Just a quick question. Between <laughs> your development and the one to the my left, you're right, the, the Pamlico area over there, there's going to be a buffer between these two neighborhoods. I just was confused on how they were going to be, are they, how they're separated or even if they are separated. Yeah, the, the, um, the town's ordinance uh, creates a different kind of buffer treatment depending on what gets built on the subject site. So if on this site there are any townhomes, then townhomes next to single family detached with the lot size uh, in uh, the Indian Wells neighborhood of Pantigo Trail and Pamlico um, would be a 40 foot type A buffer. Um, if the applicant eventually elects not to use build any townhomes and they're all single family detached under 8,000 square feet, then the size of that buffer starts to shrink a little bit down to a 30 foot type B. And then if the lot sizes are exactly identical, you know, they're all over 8,000 square feet on both sides, you can actually have a landscape strip in the backyards uh, of the two projects. And um, so I hope that answers. So it, no, it does, because that's what I was confused on. The depth of, will depend on what finally gets built. Okay, and then you, and that's strictly, you guys will take care of that whenever they submit their plans. Correct, okay. when a development plan is submitted, the town will uh, review it to make sure it conforms uh, and meets the town's ordinances for buffer. Okay, thank you. There is also a grade change. So even, uh, even with a very minimal amount of buffer, there's enough of a grade change because the creek area is, again, I've lost the cursor, but the creek area is back in the sort of northwest corner. Oh, uh, oh there, there you go. Oh, that's up weird. Here. Okay, yeah, that's the spot. That's the low point. So all of the stormwater will eventually go there. There's also this grade change between that and the Pantigo Trail just because of the current grade now, and there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room to kind of buck that grade. So you will have a change in visual that's entirely just grade. Okay, thanks. I don't have any questions. <coughs> I have none either. Here you go. I believe all my questions have been answered. Thank you. We'll just keep rolling along. Same, same mind, thing. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions? Does anyone have a motion in mind? I'll make a motion. I move that the board find case number 18, REZ 13, is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans for a reason set forth in the staff report, presentation, and discussion by the Planning and Zoning Board. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Nope, it just makes sense for this area. It's close to 55, it's close to the park, shopping centers, everything makes sense. Anything on your end? Um, similar, the construction or the, the development that's going on around it looks to be consistent with what they're proposing to put in there. So all of that sort of becomes part of a larger neighborhood scheme. So mm -hmm. it seems reason reasonable. Excellent. Any other uh, discussion on this motion? Would all those in favor of, uh, let me make sure I get it right, 18 REZ 13, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. That motion also carries unanimously. We are now through to new or old business. We have one piece of new business. That is our annual report. Mr. Reeds, would you take it away? Sure. So this uh, discussion item is in regard to the, uh, the board's report for the past uh, 12 months. Um, I believe Mark did send out the draft of the report to all, all members. So if anyone has any um, major comments, feedback, um, <laughs> see any errors that need correcting, uh, let me know. The one thing I do want to pass along is that the main discussion point item that I'm going to stress uh, during our presentation tomorrow is kind of the, the branding of the board and how our focus really should be on um, consistency going forward and how we really want to kind of narrow our view and focus on that and, and that really be the goal of our board uh, going forward for the next year. So um, that was really all I was going to stress on and if anyone has anything else, please let me know. Anyone have anything to add? Mm -hmm. I'll point out for anyone uh, who was watching this that uh, the annual report, once it is uh, presented will appear on the website under our Planning and Zoning Board section in the Carytown website, so it'll be available for everyone to look at. That's why we don't go through the details of it here. 
Any, uh, anything else to mention about that? There's no motions involved with the, uh, the annual report other than that brief discussion. Does anyone else have any other new business or anything to uh, bring up before we call an adjournment to this? Then I would I be looking. One, one thing. Yes. He's not here, but I just want to say I think this is Victor's last meeting. And unfortunately, he's not here, <coughs> but I want to, um, at least for the record, you know, uh, appreciate Victor and having served with him on the board. I appreciated his um, his insight and certainly his uh, the thoroughness in which he, in the seriousness and they took this, his position and his responsibility and uh, raised a lot of uh, good points and always well thought out. <clears throat> so appreciate his service. Well, thanks for that. Yes, we will miss Victor. And we'll again add on to the annual report and and uh, Mr. Varney's uh, leaving us is the board terms, the board year ends now and it runs October through September. So starting at next, uh, next month's meeting, we'll have new board members and that's where we have our annual report that we're talking about now, even though it's not the uh, end of the calendar year, but it's the end of our board year. So that's why we're discussing that. Anything else? But we, uh, New Year, board year, we adjourn the same old fashioned way. So if anybody would care to make a motion to that effect. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned. Good evening. Aye.